Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me, and I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Mark my words. Well, uh, I'm all in on Donald Trump. I know many of you are buying the hook, line, and sinker line that he's not in it seriously. I'm taking him seriously. And I have to say to you that I'm very honored to tell you that uh, Mr. Donald Trump's idea to build a wall with Mexico came directly from the Savage Manifesto on Borders, Language, and Culture found in my book, Trickle Up Poverty, where it was uh, clause number two of my contract with America, the Savage Manifesto, where I said, close the borders. Use illegal aliens to build a wall between the United States and Mexico. Have Sheriff Joe Arpaio oversee the project. Pay the illegals for their labor in the form of a one-time worker fee. Upon finishing, repatriate them. So thank you very much, Donald Trump. Uh, I'm glad that you uh, are at number two. Number one was English only. I'm going to ask Mr. Trump if he would make English the official language of the United States and require all who immigrate to our country to begin immediately to learn English as part of the requirement to qualify for the privilege of American citizenship. Likewise, Mr. Trump, would you require voting ballots to be written in English only? Welcome to the Savage Nation. Topic number one is Donald Trump running. Would you vote for him? Yes or no? Why or why not? Topic number two is the race scandal of the, uh, well, I hate to say the fake black because she has done more embarrassment for herself than anyone else. How anyone could defend this lunatic is beyond me. I think the woman should be investigated by the FBI for having faked her race for private gain. I think it should be a crime. Number three, we have the meddlesome Pope, the Pope's mischief. As you know, the Pope is mixing religion with politics, which is a no-no in the United States. He has been selected, hand-selected by the New World Order. He's the first non-European Pope in 1,200 years The same people who gave us Obama gave us this pope. The same people who gave us Obama and the pope are giving the world a good beating. He is from an area where Marx's theory was used to rule over the people. The pope is a danger to the world. Yes, I'll be very clear on that. He knows about as much about weather as my... Well, let's put it to you this way. The only thing the pope knows about meteorology is that when it rains, his highly paid aides in the Vatican take out umbrellas and open them for him. The man knows nothing about climate. And for a religious man to do this is incomprehensible. How the Catholic people can put up with this, I don't know. And by the way, if he hates capitalism so much and wealthy people so much, I think the Pope ought to begin with an example by selling off some of the great art in the Vatican. And I think this Pope, this deceiver, What do you think, because someone wears a holy robe, they're holy? Are you people nuts? How many imams are terrorists? Oh, you're willing to go along with that, aren't you? Well, the Pope is a Marxist. I stand by those words. He is a wolf in in, uh, Pope's clothing. He is an eco-wolf in Pope's clothing. He is a stealth Marxist in religious garb. What do you think I have to get on my hands and knees for him? He's a man. He's a man, and I disagree with his big lie, and I resent Mixing religion with politics in my nation. It's sickening. It's bad enough we had to put up with Obama mixing race with politics for all these years. Now we have to put up with a mixing Catholicism with, with politics. It's disgusting. The world is melting down in front of our eyes because of men like this, the deceiver. The great deceiving Pope. And so we have to stand up to him. It's that simple. This is simple. But again, I would make an offer right now in order to help the world's poor and to help the Pope distribute some of the wealth of the the Vatican, I, Michael Savage, hereby bid $1 million for any Michelangelo in the Vatican. That's an opening bid. I realize it may be worth more. (laughs) I'll I'll put up a million dollars for any one of the Michelangelos in the Vatican. 
I'll even go a step further. I'll put up $5 million if they'll sell me the Sistine Chapel and transport it to San Francisco. I mean, I know it may be worth more, but think of all of the poor that could be fed with that $5 million, Mr. Pope. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is and why don't you show the people you're not a stooge of the radical left? What a disgrace this world has become that you would sit there idly and go in those pews and throw money into those pots. Pew on it. Pew on it. It stinks to high heaven. And I don't give a damn what he wears. I don't care what mumbo jumbo he uses. It's disgusting to mix, poli to mix politics with religion like this in my country. Secondly, the man sounds like the false prophet in Revelation. He sounds just like the false prophet in Revelation. An ecumenical spiritual figure directing mankind to worship the Antichrist. The man is a false prophet. I'll, how could you buy this garbage? How in the world can you buy this? The world is cooling off. And the man is pushing this to attack capitalism? This is unbelievable to me. We're living in global tyranny right now. We are living in global tyranny where the big lie is told over and over again. And there's almost no one to stand up to the big liars. But let's go back to the main topic. Donald Trump, I'd vote for him. He'll be on the show eventually, not today, maybe another day. But I want to say again that I'm having a big effect on the thinking of Donald Trump, in my opinion. I think his advisors got that right out of my book. I wish he'd get some of the others, like defend the borders. I'm sure he'll do that. Defund and repeal Obamacare. Reduce the size and scope of government by cutting all federal departments except defense by 4% each year for a total of 16% cuts in all federal departments over four years. Require government employees to speak English and to have achieved at least a high school diploma or fire them. Liquidate TARP. Oil for illegals. And that would be a Mexico paying one barrel of oil per month per illegal alien that has snuck into our country. Let's say there's 30 million of them here. I want 30 million barrels of oil a month from Mexico, which they owe us. That is in the form of reparations for the generous free health care, free welfare, uh, and other care that the illegal aliens from Mexico have received. Mr. Trump, would you strike down the anchor babies law, eliminating the loophole in our national law which encourages illegal immigrants to enter the country for the purpose of dumping anchor babies who become instant U.S. citizens. Mr. Trump, would you export jailed illegal aliens overcrowded with almost two and a half million inmates? 29% are illegal aliens. No, I'm sorry, of the two and a half million inmates in our prisons, about 29% are illegal aliens. They don't even belong here yet. We're paying an average of $29,000 a year to house, feed, clothe, and entertain them. Would he deport them? Would he use profiling to prevent terror attacks? Will he name the enemy as radical Islam? Those are just some of the beginning questions I would raise. They're all in my uh, previous bestseller, Trickle Up Poverty. I'm glad it's had its effect. Would you vote for him? Yes or no? Yes or no? Let's take some calls on this. Because I think the next call is going to lay out a groundwork for, uh, the groundwork for something. Here. And by the way, there's three different topics right now. Trump, the race scandal, and the Pope's mischief. Those are the three topics. Three topics. WBAP in Dallas. Jeff, thanks for making the show so big in your city. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, could Donald Trump be to Jeb Bush what Ross Perot was to Bush 41 and we end up with Hillary? Now, that is a very important question, and although I respect Donald Trump, and I have to disclose that I am a member of the Mar-a-Lago Club. It would be unfair for me not to say that. And I go there about once a year. On occasion, I run into Donald, and I find him extremely charming. But this is a very serious issue. Because when Ross Perot ran, I was the only one in radio, and I have the tape to prove it, to state on the air that he was running to undermine the Republican candidate to make certain that the Democrat won. Do you remember that? Yes, I do very well. And I remember distinctly saying that because I saw it from a mile away. And people said, well, why would Ross Perot have done that? It was simple. People didn't know that Ross Perot had a very big company that processed the welfare checks, if I believe, if I remember correctly. His company, a data processing company, I think it was EDS, if my memory doesn't fail me. Is it EDS? He owned EDS, huge data processing company that had a contract with the federal government to print the welfare checks in America. 
So why would it not have been in his interest to elect a Democrat? That's what I said on the radio. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I saw right through Ross Perot. Yeah. Oh, I was taken I was taken in by his down home charm. Why when I get under that hood, I'll fix that engine that's sputtering, I'll put in a new fan belt, I'll make sure those points and plugs are new. Why I'll make the car of America run better. Now who wouldn't have loved that con, right? Exactly. And that's what scares me about Donald Trump. He has a lot of great ideas. But if he were to run as a independent instead of a Republican, then we could have the same scenario and we end up with another Clinton. Well, I pray to God that he's not that cynical. But given the world that we live in, there is no way to know that at this time, is there? No, there's not. That is the absolute truth. So the, the, the giveaway on this, and I'm glad that, that, that you called on this, because the Ross Perot analogy is quite apt. The way to view this is that if he declares as a Republican, we'll say he's not doing it as a spoiler. If he declares as an independent, we'll say he is doing it as a spoiler, right? Exactly. If he declares as a Republican, then it's not a spoiler scenario, unless he doesn't win the primary and then decides to run as an independent, and then we don't know for sure. How many times have I said that as a popular talk show host, I could suck 12% of the vote out of the Republican Party if I declared? Didn't I say that? My estimate is 12 to 15% of the people would gladly vote for a nationalist candidate such as Michael Savage. But I said if I did it, all I would do was guarantee a Hillary election. So you're saying the same thing applies here? Yes. Donald Trump could maybe even intentionally be the spoiler that puts Hillary into the office. He's a brilliant... Well, let, let's, let's do this. If Mr. Trump agrees to come on my show... I will directly ask him that. I'll say people are concerned about it, and I think you need to clear the air on this. How can you assure them that you are not running in a, in a Ross Perot spoiler manner? I would say it directly. He's a direct man. I, Michael Savage, am a direct man. He does not mince words. I would like to see his answer to that. I would, too, and I hope you do that because uh, the millions and millions of listeners who listen to you and believe in you uh, want to know that scenario and what he's really up to. My friend, you are right. By the way, are you a father by any chance? Yes, I am. Two wonderful boys. Well, God bless the fathers of America, and we all have a holiday for men uh, coming up very soon on the 23rd. And I'm sending you my novel, Countdown to Mecca, as my Father's Day gift to you for Father's Day. So stay on the line. Everyone who gets on this show today and tomorrow, right through Father's Day, will get a free copy of uh, my best-selling novel, Countdown to Mecca. WABC, Tom, would you vote for Donald Trump, yes or no? Absolutely, and the biggest reason for me is because he's not a politician. I'm sick of them all. Okay, hey, that's how I feel, but I, we are a little leery, given the question that the last caller just raised. Is he a spoiler for Hillary? I don't see it that way. I, I don't see he's a different. Uh, he's a different party. No, no, I, listen, I get it. I hope you're right. I like Donald. I want him to run. I think he can kick you-know-what, and I can guarantee you that if he really does run, he'll win. I, you know, I don't care what the snide people in the media are saying. They're all snickering at him. This man could buy and sell them like toe dust. I look at these smiling women on CNN and MSNBC like it's a joke. He could, he could get rid of them. Like dandruff between his toes, that's what they are to me. I look at them. I, I laugh at them. They're nothing. They're dust between the toes of a man cleaning his feet out. And this man, they're laughing at him. He could buy and sell their network. You know, and this leads to another point that I'd like to make that's something the media won't tell you. Oh, he's a very rich man, and guess what? Most pe poor people would rather trust a rich man in office than a poor man. Do you agree with me on that? Of course, because he's successful. Bingo, right. Most poor people would vote for a rich man. They don't want to vote for a, a dirtbag like that other one, Sanders, that, 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 uh, that fraud from Union Square on a soapbox. They don't want a commie running for office. They're not going to vote for him. They know the guy couldn't run a souvlaki stand. If, if you gave Bernie Sanders a souvlaki stand to run, he'd wind up broke in three days. He would lose the permit from the city to sell a souvlaki, or somebody would sell him spoiled souvlaki. That's what you get from a communist running a business. No, I, I say that Donald Trump being a very successful rich billionaire is a real calling card in a country that's dying for a businessman. And by the way, having said that, boy, I'm running short on time because this is an exciting topic. The last point that I made, I'm not even selling the book. It's way past its lifespan, trickle up poverty. But you know, when, I, when ideas last, I have to say that I'm very proud to say my last point in this book in my manifesto, number 37, run the country like a business, not an empire. How's that? 
I'll be right back. You get a copy, by the way, of Countdown to Mecca. Stay on the line. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Don't We owe China $1.3 trillion. We owe Japan more than that. So they come in, they take our jobs, they take our money, and then they loan us back the money, and we pay them in interest. And then the dollar goes up, so their deal's even better. How stupid are our leaders? How stupid are these politicians to allow this to happen? Man, I wish to God he does run. He'd win by a landslide, incidentally. All of the toe dust on, on television would be, would be blown away in the wind. They're just toe dust in the wind. I, I love them mocking him, these little men on television. They work out in a gym and they have a suit and they get on MSNBC. They look like toe dust with eyeglasses. They're sitting there mocking this guy. This guy could save the country. And the toe dust could go fly off in the wind like a butterfly. Unbelievable to me. I hope he runs. I called his assistant today. We know each other. She said he's so booked up, we'll try to get Donald on your show. I mean, he'll be on other shows before mine. He'll do TV first. I get it. I know how this works. But it doesn't matter when he gets to me. Because when he does, I'm going to ask him a few questions as a friend, not as a gotcha guy. I will ask Donald Trump questions as a friend who wants him to run, who wants him to win, who wants him to beat Hillary, and send her back to the Clinton Library as a librarian where she belongs. That's all she's fit for is to be a gatekeeper at the Clinton Library. She ought to turn the turnstile and make sure the tickets are paid for on the way in and make sure no one's stealing anything on the way out like the purple dress. That's about all she's made for. This guy's out there. He's speaking. Then we got the meddlesome Pope lying about global warming. He knows nothing about science. And he's mixing science with religion, which is a violation of church and state. How can you Catholics put up with him? And then we have the race scandal. How can a black put up with this without demanding a federal investigation of this uh, character in Spokane? How? Big topics. Savage Nation. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. We have people that aren't working. We have people that have no incentive to work. But they're going to have incentive to work because the greatest social program is a job and they'll be proud and they'll love it and they'll make much more money than they would have ever made. And they'll be they'll be doing so well and we're going to be thriving as a country thriving. It can happen. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. I tell you that. I'll bring back our jobs from China, from Mexico, from Japan, from so many places. I'll bring back our jobs and I'll bring back our money. Go, Donald, go. Boy, what a change that would be after the uh, presidency that we have now. Uh, you wouldn't even call him a president. Remember he lost the trade deal last week and he disappeared? Remember we were told that today, Tuesday, they would vote on it again? Remember we were told that on Friday? Raise your hands if you remember. That Obama said, I'll be back. Remember? Boehner said, I'll be back. We're going to vote again on Tuesday. We're going to get that trade bill over the line. Where is Obama? Well, he played golf this weekend. He had a private concert in the White House with Prince. 500 guests undisclosed. He wouldn't disclose who they were. A big blowout. Concert at the White House featuring Prince. Guest list not provided. Very much like the Romanovs before the fall of Russia. Obama's sort of like the Romanovs before the fall of Russia, by the way. An imperious imperial president, private parties with people he doesn't even disclose. We know one guest on the list was the dirtbag Al Sharpton. The, the, I, I, you have no idea what this man has done to this country. But let's stay away from that for a minute. What a change it will be if we have Donald Trump in the presidency instead of this Barack Obama who won't even come back and fight for what he wants because he's too lazy? Where is he? Why isn't he voting today? Why isn't he, why isn't he Democrat arm-twisting anymore? What, he's hang, hung over from too much Chardonnay? Where is he? 
Where is Obama? They promised us another vote today. Where are they? And where's that drunk Boehner today? 855-407-282 is the phone number. We have more Donald Trump. Let's play the next one in line on the Savage Nation. Because I'm totally against the trade bill for a number of reasons. Number one, the people negotiating it don't have a clue. Our president doesn't have a clue. He's a bad negotiator. He's the one that did Bergdahl. We get Bergdahl, they get five killer terrorists that everybody wanted over there. Huh. We get Bergdahl, we get a traitor. We get a Ooh. no good traitor. And they get the five people that they wanted for years. And those people are now back on the battlefield trying to kill us. That's the negotiator we have. Ooh. Take a look at the deal he's making with Iran. He makes that deal. Israel maybe won't exist very long. It's a disaster, and we have to protect Israel. Mm, this guy is so clear speaking. No wonder the toe dust are mocking him on television. No wonder the little overpaid toe dust and skirts are mocking Donald Trump because they're listening to reality when they're nothing but toe dust in the wind. Yep, already they're writing the hit pieces. They're mocking him because they know he's serious. They see what a real man is as opposed to the fakers out there, the liars, the sound biters. No, the morons, idiots, losers, and dummies out there hate him, but the real people like him. He's being attacked, incidentally. Oh, yeah. You know who's attacking him? We have a list. You know who's attacking him? NBC host Chuck, Chuck uh, Dodd. Chuck Dodd. Chuck Dodge. A fraud through and through, a man who grew a beard to look like he's intelligent. Grew a beard to look smart. Former Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, who destroyed the military. Chuck Hagel should be held up on war crimes charges for what he did to the U.S. military. He doesn't like Donald Trump. You hear this? You want to read? George Will, a real reliable source. George Will. How relevant is George Will? Irrelevant. Conservative columnist Charles Sauerkraut Hammer. He doesn't like him. Conservative blogger Michelle Malkin. How relevant is she? When have you last heard her or paid any attention to her? Republican strategist, frontman Karl Rove doesn't like him. Fake Republican pollster Frank Luntz. Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban. Of course he doesn't like Donald. Donald's ten times the man. Look who else doesn't like Donald. Cher. Wow. What an endorsement that is. She's a heavyweight. National Review writer Jonah Goldberg. Another reliable source of no one reads. Look how these people are. British Prime Minister David Cameron doesn't like Donald Trump. You hear? David Cameron, who ran as a fake conservative Tory. Oh, look who else is attacking Donald Trump. Former NBC News faker Brian Williams. What a distinguished group of losers, dubbies, morons, idiots. Yeah, what a list. Go, Donald, go. Go, Donald, go. 855 Do we have the one where he talks about ISIS and calls them like it is? Do we have that? So now ISIS has the oil. And what they don't have, Iran has. Years ago, I said, and I love the military, and I want to have the strongest military that we've ever had, and we need it more now than ever. But I said, don't hit Iraq, because you're going to totally destabilize the Middle East Iran is going to take over the Middle East. Iran and somebody else will get the oil. And it turned out that Iran is now taking over Iraq. Think of it. Iran is taking over Iraq. Now that came out of my book. It did. I know it did. Because I published it before he said it the first time. It came out uh, of my book, uh, Liberalism as a Mental Disorder, published in 06. And I've known Donald off and on since then. Uh, I once a year run into him. I don't mean we talk. I'm not in his kitchen cabinet. I'm not on his salad buffet. But, you know, I, I write the ideas. And it's like Billy Joel, I write the songs. I write the ideas. I broadcast daily. I'm on the biggest station in New York City, WABC. I'm on in drive time. I'm in the catbird seat of Manhattan. Do you understand that? Do you get it? What do you think? I'm just heard on a set of tin cans and a, and a string, two Dixie cups and a string. Don't underestimate who listens to me. Everybody in this country with a brain knows Michael Savage. Everybody. I'm perhaps the most original thinker in the history of talk radio. So many of these ideas 
are wonderful ideas. I believe in them. And I only pray to God that he runs and he wins. That's my only prayer. Because this guy can really take no prisoners. He will have the toe dust scurrying in the wind. All the little empty skirts, all the little empty suits will be fleeing and running for the hills because he'll tear them to ribbons. They're the people who've destroyed the country, the toe dust on television. Now that's topic one. The meddlesome Pope is number two. The race scandal is number three. And we've got to get to the race scandal because I don't know how any African-American, I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, cannot be sickened by what this woman did. Listen to clip number eight of the fake black woman, Dolezal. Listen. You started a, a discussion on race and what it means in this country. Did this come as a surprise to you, or did you always expect the lid would be blown off your story at some point? The timing of it was a shock. I mean, uh, wow. The, the wow. timing was completely unexpected. I mean, wow. Um, as, to, as to the second question, I, I did feel that at some point I would need to address the complexity of my identity. What do you mean the complexity of your identity? You're a white woman. There's no complexity. You're a faker. You ought to be arrested for what you did. It's an insult to this nation doing this at a time like an incendiary time like this when we have a race baiter in the White House. Listen to the next one. Wait till you hear how she lies here. Are you an African-American woman? I identify as black. You identify as black. Let me put a picture up of you in your early 20s, though. Mm -hmm. And when you see this picture, is this an African-American woman? Or is that a Caucasian woman? That's I, not in my early 20s, but... Um... That's a little younger, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Everything's 16, a joke for these liberals. Is she a Caucasian woman or an African-American woman? I would say that visibly she would be identified as, as white by people who see her. But at the time, were you identifying yourself as African-American? In that picture, during that time, no. Do you hear the snotty laughter, the college girl snot nose of the type that works for Obama? Everything is a damn joke to them. They get away with murder. They've bulldozed everyone with their lies. This one used bronzette coloring on her skin. How could an African-American listening to this program, whether you generally agree with my politics or hate me, how can you not agree with me on this, that this woman ought to be arrested? at a time like this for faking her, her race. How in the world can you not agree with me? Matt Lauer, to his credit, by the way, asked her hard questions. Listen to 10. Your parents were asked this question this week and they didn't have any trouble answering it. Here's what they said. She's clearly our birth daughter and we're clearly Caucasian. That's just a fact. Your father went on to say she's a very talented woman doing work she believes in. Why can't she do that as a Caucasian woman, which is what she is? How do you answer that question? Well, first of all, I, I really don't see why they're in such a rush to um, whitewash some of the work that I have done and who I am and how I've identified. And this goes back to a very early age with my self-identification with the black experience um, as, as a very young child. That's not the question. You lied, you faked your race, you violated federal law, you took the position that a black woman could have had, number two. Number three, you're an embarrassment to the human race to use race to your advantage. What are you talking about? You don't think she used this to get ahead for herself? You think she believes a word she says? This woman has bulldozed everyone her whole life with her crap, her malarkey, her garbage. I know the type. I know the type. I've seen them my whole life. So don't lie to me about it. She's used race as a weapon at a very dangerous time. And it's only for self-aggrandizement. And I believe the FBI has an obligation to this nation to investigate whether she violated any federal laws by lying about her race on an application. Let me ask you something. You're a white person. You apply for a scholarship. And under race, you check black. And you win a scholarship. And then they find out that you're white and they disqualify you. What do you do? Sue the, sue the, sue the, uh, the, the university? Tell me, what would happen to you if you lied about your race on a scholarship? You're a white male. You apply for a scholarship that is reserved only for, I don't know, people of color, I guess. White males need not apply in the new racial America under Obama where race is key. What would they do to you if they found out you were really Caucasian? Well, you'd be disqualified and you'd probably be sued. You might even be arrested by a state or federal uh, governmental official for what you have done, by the way. And incidentally, speaking of scholarships, as you know, I promised to give away $100,000 to five lucky students, $20,000 each over two years. 
And after reviewing 1,700 savage scholarship applications of what it means to be an American, we have five winners. We do have the five lucky winners. We're going to announce them, I believe, on July 2nd. So I want you to tell your friends to be tuning in because you may be one of those people who won the sweepstakes. You may say it's not a lot of money. Well, to these people, it is a lot of money. And I realize that uh, it's important to them, which is why I, I donated that $100,000 to this cause. So let's go back to the issues here. We've got her. We've got Trump. We've got the Pope uh, meddling in science. 855-400-7282. Let's get some of the callers up there. WABC, Andrew, line three. Go ahead, please. Your opinion of Donald Trump. Uh, Andrew, go, please. Are you there? Bingo. Line two. Anthony, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. Oh, what a thrill it is to hear those clips you play of Donald Trump. This is the greatest speech. All right, goodbye. Thank you. You're a regular. I don't like you. You change your name every day. I don't go for it. You, you know, there's a, uh, he's a squatter. That guy's a radio squatter. You ever get a radio squatter? They change their name. They want to get on the radio every day. The same story. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. If he launches a third party, I'll know, by the way. If he, if he launches a third party, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a Perot job. It's to undermine the Republicans and, and get Hillary in. Period. End of story. That's it. No more lunches at Mar-a-Lago. I'll have to go to Burger King. Actually, I don't think I'd resign because the food is too good there. And if I go there once a year, I like to see the 90-year-old men who look like 110. I mean, where else can you go to a place where the men who are 90 look like they're at the age of Moses near his death because of the many surgeries they had on their face? They look like moon men. Their wives don't even look. I mean, their wives are like 80. They think they look 50, but they look 200. Where else can you have a meal like that? You can't see that at the Burger King. They can't afford that kind of surgery. WJR, Carol, welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, hi, uh, Dr. Savage, hi. This is Carol calling from Willowbrook, Ohio, and listening to WJR out of Detroit. I just wanted to say that the best thing that Donald Trump has going for him is he's not part of the political establishment because the political establishment is the problem that we're facing today. We just, it, we've just seen it in the last election. When we voted in our representatives, to stop the policies of this administration, and they were put at the back of the bus as far as their influence was concerned. All right, so in, not, in point, plain English, would you vote for him? I definitely would now that he's running. I, I have seen other ones, but when I look at the whole roster of everyone who's running, he's got the best things going because he's going to run this government as a business. Right, but let's have the caveat on my show today to be fair to my audience. If he runs as an independent, it's the end of the Republican candidacy. He'll suck 15 or 20 percent of the vote. It guarantees that Hillary Clinton wins, which would be a disaster for the world. Stay in the line, dear. I'm giving you countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. Even though you're not a father, I'm sure there's a father in your family. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Savage I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. Whoa, from his mouth to God's ear. So, Donald Trump, would you vote for Donald Trump? Then we have the race scandal of this con woman saying she identifies as a black, therefore she is black, and there is no such thing as race. This is a, you know, I tell you how many times do I have to say this. Liberalism is a mental disorder. So you have certain chromosomes that define you as a man, but you're a woman in your head, so you're a woman. Uh, let's see, you're born Caucasian, but you think that you're black, you feel that you're black, so it's true. How many times have I told you liberalism, liberalism is a mental disorder? If it feels like something, that's what it is. Don't you see what this has led to? How about that faker who said she was a Native American, Elizabeth Warren, when she isn't? Look how far she got with her fakery. Racial identity, huh? Using race for personal advantage is a disgrace. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. We owe China... 1.3 1.3 trillion dollars. We owe Japan more than that. So they come in, they take our jobs, they take our money, and then they loan us back the money and we pay them an interest. And then the dollar goes up, so their deal's even better. How stupid are our leaders? How stupid are these politicians to allow this to happen? Donald Trump, would you vote for him? Yes or no? Now, the real test here as to whether he's really serious, and I hope to God he is, is A, does he run as a Republican, and B, who does he choose as his running mate? And if he chooses Ben Carson as his running mate, which would be fantastic politically and for the uh, nation, wow, would that be some ticket, huh? How would the left attack him then? What, Ben Carson isn't black enough because he identifies as an American? I guess they could say Ben Carson isn't an African-American because he's too conservative. Maybe they could strip him of his race. I mean, that's the way that would work. And by the way, with this whole issue of if you feel like something, you are that. If this clown, Caitlyn Jenner, feels like a woman, he is a woman. Are you crazy? Let me ask you something. Let's say you're 45 years old and you don't want to work anymore and you want to collect Social Security. Well, what if you go to the Social Security Agency and you say, how dare you treat me as though I'm 45? I'm tired. I feel like I'm 65. I've chosen to feel 65. I want Medicare, and I want to start collecting my Social Security. Would that be valid? Isn't that what we should be doing because of Rachel, whatever her name is, and Caitlin? If it feels like with this, with that? You mean if I feel like I'm a fighter pilot, I'm suddenly a fighter pilot? Well, that's what Obama's done to the military. He's taken women who can't fly a Piper Cub and put them in charge of uh, entire air divisions. He's taken women who can't pilot a motorboat and put them in charge of the U.S. Navy. Because liberalism is a mental disorder. That's it in plain English. We're living in a distorted, crazed world. The world is falling apart because of liberalism. I pray Donald is real. I pray Donald is running. And what's interesting to me is that on the same day we're talking about someone as real as Donald Trump, we have someone as fake as Rachel Donazel, who not only was outed for being white and still insists that because she feels black, she is black, and people are taking us seriously. It shows you how far uh, the country has fallen, how rotted out this country has become. It's unbelievable to me. How could black people not get angry over her? It's unbelievable to me. So if I feel as though I'm 65 when I'm 45, can I force Social Security to give me Medicare? You want me to give you a few other examples of insanity? This is insanity. It was started by the transgender community who have forced their way into bathrooms that they're not allowed to be in. And you know it and I know what's going on here. And you know who started this whole game. And I think it's time we stood up to this insanity. By the way, 855-407-282, phone number. Let's start in case on KCMO Radio in Kansas City. William, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Oh, Michael, it's an honor to speak with you. My question for you is, what would you recommend Donald Trump doing to all the people who refuse to assimilate? I, I there, it's a, there's a very simple answer to that. It's not that complicated. If you want to vote... You learn English because the ballots will only be in English. End of story. You want to collect a welfare check? You want a food stamp? You speak in English. No ticky, no laundry. How's that? Does that work for you? Yes, sir, it does. I work in the restaurant industry, and I got into an argument with my previous employer because I won't learn Spanish to speak to our dishwasher. Well, uh, that's your decision. Maybe the dishwasher ought to learn rudimentary English to speak to you. Yeah, well, if they're coming to my country, I don't understand why I should learn their language. 
That's right. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. But now liberalism has reversed that. When in Rome, tell the Romans they're morons and do what you do. But make sure you collect the Roman dinar from them. Take their money and then spit on them. I mean, what do you expect if with this week, why wouldn't they spit on you? They, they, they go to a boxing match. How many times have I said how outraged I am that I go to boxing matches or watch them and they're waving a Mexican flag? This is America. They're not in Mexico. They're not in Guatemala. They're not in El Salvador. Why are we watching them wave Mexican flags at, at uh, sporting events in this country? Why is the American flag trashed by the left while foreign flags are revered? Because the communists have won the culture wars and it's time to fight back. It's time to elect a nationalist businessman like Donald Trump, in my opinion, William. I completely agree with you. All right, Don, uh, William, are, are you a father or do you have a father in your family? No, sir. I am 20 years old. My I'm a Wait a minute, you're 20, but you sound like you're 65. If you feel like 65, maybe you ought to collect Medicare. Yeah, and maybe I can qualify for all the scholarships that all the colleges are giving out, and maybe I can... There you go. Well, you, know, you know, you're right. Wait a minute. Why don't you apply for a scholarship in engineering and say you feel like Albert Einstein, and therefore you are, you are Albert Einstein? Because if you feel like Albert Einstein, the way this Donazelle feels like she's black, then you must be Albert Einstein, right? Yeah. Right, William, I'm sending you Countdown to Mecca. I'm sure that you can read this great novel. 855-407-282. KBOI Radio. Raymond, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Thank you, sir. I Thanks for taking my call. I find it pretty amusing and a little bit disheartening that my fifth grade, my youngest son, that's 11 years old, talking about this Rachel, Rachel Dvorak person, whoever she is, he asked me last night, watching the news, he said, Dad, why isn't she in trouble? She lied. And, and what's, what was your answer to this child? To my son, my youngest son, I said, well, well, Nicholas, I, ho I hope she is in trouble. Because well, so far, I haven't heard a word from the FBI. As far as I can tell, she violated some federal statutes by lying about her race to get her job at the NAACP and to bull her way into a teaching position. Isn't, isn't that lying? And, and aren't there consequences for it? If a Caucasian man lied about his race for a scholarship and then was found out, he would probably be stripped of his scholarship for sure, thrown out of school and possibly charged with some crime of uh, identity theft. And forced to pay restitution. Well, it's like, you know what this is? People don't realize how serious this is. This is the equivalent of a fake hate crime. Do you know that this woman has, a, has committed the equivalent of a fake hate crime? Yes. I, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Well, this is what liberalism has wrought in this nation. All right, my friend, hang in there. We're not finished yet. America may be hanging like a loose tooth, but we can still save it. Believe me. I'm sending you countdown to Mecca. My blockbuster novel, it's actually a, an exciting read. I, I'm not reading from the book this week, but I have in the past. When I get around to it, I will. We have some great sound bites we haven't gotten to yet. Let's jump back from Trump to uh, this character, this faker. In clip 10, listen to this interchange. Your parents were asked this question this week, and they didn't have any trouble answering it. Here's what they said. She's clearly our birth daughter, and we're clearly Caucasian. That's just a fact. Your father went on to say she's a very talented woman doing work she believes in. Why can't she do that as a Caucasian woman, which is what she is? How do you answer that question? Well, first of all, I... I really don't see why they're in such a rush to um, whitewash some of the work that I have done and who I am and how I've identified. And this goes back to a very early age with my self-identification with the black experience um, as, as a very young child. She's a sociopath in my estimation, and that's a very dangerous thing to laud and to hold up as a role model. This woman is a con woman, a sociopath. She was exposed, and instead of apologizing and hiding in shame, as a true soci sociopath, she comes out and she glorifies and doubles down on her big lie. Do you get it? Do you understand how dangerous this is for this nation? And we have no leadership to explain it. That's why I'm on the radio. I'm one of the few people who can explain it in the way it actually is. This is what I'm talking about. If we let this meltdown continue, 
you're going to arrest the next Muslim plotting to kill someone somewhere, the next terror attack by another Muslim who hates America. And what will he say? He's a freedom fighter. And you'll have people like Rachel Donizel saying, you know, I identify with him. He's like a George Washington. He's one of our patriots. You don't think this is going on in our universities? You don't think that the leftists are poisoning your children's minds with this lie? You don't think that these neo-Nazis disguised as liberals are poisoning your children, telling them that the Muslim killers are simply defending themselves against an imperialist America? You don't think this poison is seeping into the minds of your children? I got another guest coming for you. Now, the poison coming out of the Pope is another story we have to talk about. The man is a liar. The man is a criminal. The man has crossed the barrier between uh, politics and religion. And I resent the Pope. I don't care how big his cross is. It doesn't matter to me. He's a Marxist through and through. I don't care how white his robes are. He doesn't belong in this nation lying about climate change. He has no right to do that. None whatsoever. And I don't know how any fair-minded Catholic cannot be as outraged as I am. Do you realize what Marxism he is espousing here? The Pope put out a 192-page encyclical on global warming. That is a complete lie and fraud. All it is is the environmentalist movement and the Marxist movement combined. He lambasts the rich. He says the rich loot the world. He attacks bankers and climate skeptics for accelerating its decline. Well, let me tell you something, Popey. I am a climate skeptic, and I'm a trained scientist. You don't know you're behind from climate. I know more about climate than you do. You liar, you. He then goes on to the big lie, saying the world is facing widespread, widespread crop failure, economic ruin, mass migration, destruction of entire ecosystems. It's all rubbish. The most advanced weather station in the world has just reported that we are in a 10-year cooling cycle. How dare this fraudulent pope, who to me is no better than Rachel Donizal, not be challenged by every Catholic with a college education in the world. And I'll pause right here and be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We have people that aren't working. We have people that have no incentive to work, but they're going to have incentive to work because the greatest social program is a job and they'll be proud and they'll love it and they'll make much more money than they would have ever made. And they'll be they'll be doing so well and we're going to be thriving as a country thriving. It can happen. I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. I tell you that. I'll bring back our jobs from China, from Mexico, from Japan, from so many places. I'll bring back our jobs and I'll bring back our money. Well, we have a realist like Donald Trump, and let's pray that he's real and really wants to run and not undermine a Republican for Hillary's sake. And given that I'm cynical and that the world of politics is filled with curveballs, I feel obligated to throw that out there because we saw what Ross Perot did to elect Clinton. Then we have a phony like the Pope. So the Pope feels that he knows something about global warming. Yeah, does he feel that? The Pope is the Rachel Donizal of climate science. What, because he feels that he knows something about climate science? He knows something about it? When did he, when did he get his PhD? When did this Marxist imposter get his PhD in climate science? When did this Marxist imposter think that the world would buy this garbage. It's environmentalism uh, 101. And he's attacking capitalism. He's attacking the, the rich. He wants to take money out of your pocket for Marxist reasons. He's asked for a new global political authority to reduce pollution. And I warned you about a world tax. This man is one of the most dangerous popes in the history of the human race. Don't sit there and tell me because he's a pope, he is a su super normal. Are you people that stupid that you don't understand where he was, ha who, who handpicked him? 
ask yourself a question. The first non-European pope in 1,200 years, where did he come from? A Marxist nation. What was he steeped in? Liberation theology. What is his political orientation? Communist. What, because he wears a white robe and a big cross? I have to get on my hands and knees? Not me. Not me. Now, I've defended the pope before, other popes. And I'm not a Catholic. So don't accuse me of being an anti-Catholic. This man is a dangerous communist who wants to steal the money of the middle class. And if he really meant what he was saying, the Pope, he ought to get up, uh, get, give up the Vatican plane and sell off some of the art in the Vatican, some of the finest art in the world, worth many billions of dollars. Give it to the poor. And he really ought to invite some poor Africans in to have dinner with him. He ought to break some, he ought to order a couple of pizzas all around for an African village. The day they invite some Africans into the Vatican, let me know about it. What f hypocrisy. They live like kings of middle e middle medieval kings, and they sit and espouse this rubbish about global warming right out of some university crackpot's playbook. Who do you think wrote this garbage for him? Another communist in the Vatican. I guess he says it, it's true. So these are the topics. Trump, the meddlesome pope, and the race scandal. It's all good. Listen to Matt Lauer interviewing the race hustler in clip 11. When did it start? I would say uh, about five years old. You began it, identifying yourself as African American? I, I was drawing self portraits with the brown crayon instead of the peach crayon and the black, you know, black curly hair. And, you know, yeah, that, that, was, how, that was how I was portraying myself. So because she's a psychotic, I have to believe her? There's some people who think they're Jesus when they're five years old. They usually get medication and, and deep therapy. So now what? Because she was caught as being a psychotic fraud, I have to believe her? Unbelievable to me. When I was five years old, I used to dress up in cowboy outfits. I had two six guns, I thought, but they were cap guns. And anyone who came into the uh, apartment that I lived in in the Bronx, I shot them dead in the doorway. Bang, bang, bang went the cap guns. I thought I was Tom Mix and Gene Autry combined. But all I really was was a little boy with cap guns. But I knew I'd out, my parents knew I'd outgrow the cap guns and the little outfit they bought for me. They thought it was cute. But this woman never outgrew her psychosis, apparently. And look how, look how far she's gone with it. Well, it worked for Obama. I mean, why, why go any further than Obama? Look how far he's gotten on his fraud. Right? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I'm a free trader, but the problem with free trade is you need really talented people to negotiate for you. If you don't have talented people, if you don't have great leadership, if you don't have people that know business, not just a political hack that got the job because he made a contribution to a campaign, which is the way all jobs just about are gotten, free trade is terrible. Free trade can be wonderful if you have smart people. But we have people that are stupid. We have people that aren't smart, and we have people that are controlled by special interests, and it's just not going to work. Good. Good. I'll vote for him. If he runs on the Republican ticket and doesn't suck votes off the Republican candidate to elect Hillary, and he selects Ben Carson or someone who's a true conservative as a running mate, I'll know he's real. If, on the other hand, he pulls a Ross Perot, then we'll know it's a Rachel Donazel candidacy. Sorry. I'm very cynical. I consider Donald a good man, but I'm not going to be hoodwinked just because I eat uh, at his buffet. We live in too dangerous a time to allow Hillary Clinton to become anything. She's only fit to be librarian at the Clinton Library as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's my opinion. What's your opinion? 855-400-7282. Uh, the issues are three. The Pope's mischief on climate. The race scandal. And would you vote for Trump? It's a very, very simple bill of fare today on the Savage Nation. Very simple bill of fare. Let's go to some of the callers. Line one, Brian, K. Eugene Radio up in Eugene, Oregon. 
Hi, Brian. What's on your mind? Thank you, sir. I believe that Rachel, what's her name, is nothing more complicated than a gigantic liar who lied to get a job. Then she was uncovered, so she has to continue lying to cover herself, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. All she's doing is creating this huge, involved backstory to make her lie look more acceptable. But the left is justifying her lie about feeling black, so therefore she is black. They're the ones who started this with the, with the transsexual business. That if you're a man, uh, you feel like a woman, fine, you're a woman. You're a woman, you feel like a man, fine, you're a man. They're the one who started this. You're a, you're a, and we warned America what would happen if we went along with the psychosis. You're exactly right. And I'm not backing off from my position. I don't care if you're gay. That's the way you are. Good luck to you. That's what you feel like doing. But don't fool yourself. You're born in a man's body, you're a man. You feel like a woman, so you're, what are you? You're gay, that's all. Well, what do you have to make a big deal out of it and start twisting reality? Well, you want reality to conform to your reality. That's the problem. That's called psychosis. That's the classic definition of a psychotic. And then you want the whole world to go along with it, or else they're evil. They're homophobic, or they're racist, or this, or that. You know, this is a very sensitive point I'm about to make. But let's talk about Barack Obama. He identifies as a black president, doesn't he? Is he a black president? Well, his, his mother was white. I'm sorry. His grandparents were white on her uh, mother and father. Why don't we ever hear he's the first biracial president? Why must we buy the big lie that he's the first black president? When did he become black? When he when identified as a left-wing black. Suddenly the left said, okay, he says he's black, therefore he's black. So what is he? What is his race? He's, he's a multiracial man. He's a biracial man, rather. But he's gotten away with it, hasn't he? So why shouldn't she get away with it? I wouldn't be surprised if she's not made some kind of department head somewhere in his, in, in his company called the United States government. It's I sickening. The, look, the whole thing is upside down because we have a, uh, an imposter in the White House. As far as I'm concerned, we have an imposter in the White House who's destroying the world. And as a result, we have all of these lunatics getting away with what they're doing now because everyone's justifying in order to justify what he's doing to us. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. Stay on the line. The next soundbite is uh, unbelievable. Lauer asks her in clip 12. I'm very surprised with Matt Lauer. He gets a, uh, an anti-Pinocchio prize for this in clip 12. Listen to this one. When did you start deceiving people? Well, I do take exception to that because it's, it's a little more complex than, than me identifying as, as black oh, no, more or complex, answering a question fraud. of are you black or white. I was actually identified when I was doing human rights work in North Idaho yeah, as right first there, transracial. Yeah. And then oh. when some of the opposition to some of the human rights work I was doing came, came forward and started, the next newspaper article identified me as being a biracial woman. And then the next article, when there were, there were actually um, burglaries, nooses, etc., was you. this is happening to a black woman. And I never corrected Well, why didn't that. you correct it? You knew it wasn't true. Well, because... Because it's more complex than, you know, being true or false. You hear it? Do you hear this psychosis? There's no truth and no falsehood anymore. Liberalism is not only a mental disorder, it's a lie. Liberalism is a lie through and through. This woman should be run out of town on a rail. How could the black community put up with her? I don't even understand how a black radical can take this. I don't understand how one of the most vocal black nationalists could take this without outrage. Why don't they speak out? Where's Louis Farrakhan on this? Where's Al the phony Chopton on this? Where's Jesse Jackson on this? Are they not offended? I'm offended, and I'm not black. This is a disgusting example of using race as a weapon to get ahead. And by the way, I mean, I, I have to say I'm shocked that Matt Lauer asked such real questions. I don't know what got into him. When did he grow a pair? I must have mixed, missed something. Maybe the hair, the hair transplants had an effect on another part of his body. Listen to clip 13. Some people have said that the way you've changed your opinion is akin to putting on blackface. And Jonathan Capehart wrote in the Washington Post, blackface remains highly racist no matter how down with the cause a white person is. Do you understand what he means by that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you agree with I it? I have a huge issue with blackface. This is not some free birth of a nation uh, mockery blackface performance. This is on a very real connected level 
um, how I've I've actually had to go there with the experience, good God. not just a visible representation, oh but with the experience. Can you see what goes on in the universities and in these civil rights groups? Do you hear the rubbish that they pass along to each other and they go, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh? And they construct and they keep constructing. They keep constructing, meaning lying, one lie after another. One lie builds on the next lie. And then they start to believe themselves. And then they con the other one in the movement. And then they all say, mm hmm, uh huh, mm hmm, uh huh, uh hey, uh -huh, uh -huh. And there they are. What do you mean there's more like complexity to it? You're a liar through and through, in my opinion. Now, here's the best one of this faker. She actually sued an all-black university, claiming she was discriminated against because she was white. I swear to God. This con woman has worked it both ways. When she was white, she sued a black university for not giving a tenure. But there's more to the story than that. Wait, it gets even better. Former student says Rachel Dolezal dismissed her as not Hispanic enough. Not only... Not only has she faked it, but she asked for a student in the class to step forward and portray his experiences as an Hispanic. But when he stood up, she said, well, he's light-skinned and he's not Spanish enough. She said, I didn't look Hispanic enough. She doubted that I could share experiences of racial or ethnic discrimination. That's what she did. This woman is a, is a danger to your children. This is not mockery. This is insanity. Now listen to the next one. It gets even worse in this. Which one? Oh, here is her suing a black university, Howard University. Listen to this con woman in 14. Your lawsuit against Howard University in 2002 where you mm -hmm. claim you were discriminated against because you were a pregnant white woman. Um, people, do you understand how people could hear that and say, here's another example. She says she identified herself as being african-american or black from a young age but here's a case where she identified herself as a white woman because it worked for her under the circumstances the reasons for the my full tuition scholarship being removed and my teaching position as well my ta position were that other people needed opportunities and you probably have white relatives and that you know that can afford to help you with your tuition and i thought that that was an injustice. Can you believe this? Can you believe the crap they get away in the universe, within the universities? And she does it with a mocking smirk in her voice. She's told this lie over and over again to the university schmucks and morons. And the university schmucks and morons are afraid of her. The university schmucks and morons are afraid of her. They're afraid of being sued. So the university schmucks and morons went along with this. So now she's on the world stage and she continues the big lie and she thinks we're going to buy this garbage? What a disgrace this nation has become under Barack Obama who has pushed the divide of race into everyone's head. It's turned black against white, white against black, gay against straight. Old against young, young, young against old, Asian against white, white against Asian, Hispanic against black, black against Hispanic. The man has destroyed race relations in the nation. The man has set this nation back 50 years, not forward 50 years. And now this clown, this clown white ex-NAACP leader comes across and says, well, your race is what you think it is. Well, then let me make an argument for those of you who believe her. If she says race is complex and it's not what your DNA says it is, why then it's time to dissolve the NAACP, isn't it? I mean, if race is a construct and it doesn't really exist and you are what you feel you are, then why do we need a national association for the advancement of colored people? And while you're at it, ask yourself this question. Why do we need La Raza chapters, including the biggest one in the White House, when La Raza stands for brown supremacism? It's an Hispanic-only advancement group. The race, la raza. Why not dissolve it since race is a construct? And by the way, while you're at it, why don't you tell that to fight fans while they're watching white men fight black men in a ring? Tell them there's no such thing as race. Or while you're at it, why don't you tell that to boxing fans as they, white, as they watch black men fight Hispanic men in a ring? Tell them there's no such thing as race as they wave their Mexican flags. Tell them there's no such thing as race. Why don't you try it on them? It's unbelievable to me how sick this country has become under the radical left that has ruined the nation. KSFO, Robert, make your point, please. Go on. You're on the Savage Nation. 
Uh, yeah, I was just calling in about the race identity and identity in general. And we have Bruce Jenner identifying as a, a man who's identifying as a woman and a white woman identifying as a black woman. And I just want to know, where do we draw the line? You know, can a 45-year-old man identify as a 13-year-old girl and have sex with a 12-year-old boy? Is that okay? I mean, where... Well, I, uh, I guess so. I mean, ask ask her. Maybe he can join the NAMBLA, National Man-Boy Love Association, and say that his 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 age is a construct although he may be 45 he feels like he's 13 and and that's my fear is that we're going to wake up one day and that's what you know it's every day you turn the tv on it's some more outrageous thing well you can thank oprah winfrey for that for for letting bruce jenner get away with that big lie for pushing that as a, as a, as a reality on us can I go is that like, simple i mean you want to twist reality right you're asking where does it end where does it oh i feel like i'm a, a fi an airline pilot i'll force united to hire me well, have you taken any flying lessons? No, but I feel like I've taken flying lessons. Well, where'd you feel you did? Well, I, I went online. I looked up flying, and I, I looked at a, a, a controller. I, th I feel like I could fly this jet. And if you don't let me in this uh, 767 uh, to fly it, I'm going to sue you under the EEOC rules because I feel like I'm a fighter pilot. And being a, excuse me, a commercial pilot, and, and being a commercial pilot is more complex than actually showing 5,000 hours in a cockpit. It's far more complex than that. There's no such thing as an absolute to the uh, liberal. It's what you feel it is. This started with the 60s. Remember what I warned you now for 21 years? Remember the ethos of the 60s? If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road? How many times have liberals said, I feel something? And so they say, well, to, to feel it means it's real, huh? Do you see what this has metastasized into? That Obama feels like an oppressed black and he uses that malarkey to get away with murder? He uses the malarkey of feeling like an oppressed black man to get away with murder. And then goes, he had a party this weekend with 500 people and he won't disclose the guest list. Why do you think that is? While he trashes the White House with his private shindigs, we are supposed to sit here like idiots and take this? Yeah, I guess we sit here and take it. Why? Because of the media. They let him get away with it. They've empowered the big lie. I am running so short of time. I apologize, but I'll be back in a moment. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Savage. What's going on? I just want a job. Just get me a job. I don't need the rhetoric. I want a job. And that's what's happening. And it's going to get worse because remember, Obamacare really kicks in in 16, 2016. Obama is going to be out playing golf. He might even be on one of my courses. I would invite him. I actually would say. I have the best courses in the world, so I'd say, you know what, if he wants to see I have one right next to the White House, right on the Potomac. If he'd like to play, that's fine. <laughs> In fact, I'd love him to leave early and play. That would be a very good thing. <laughs> I love Donald Trump's outspokenness, plain language, and uh, he shoots from the hip because he's not afraid of anything. Why should he be? He's going to worry about the toe dust on TV mocking him, the little girls with the, with the dresses there. They make a mockery of him. I hope he runs, and I hope he's real about running and defeating uh, Hillary. But we can't be sure. We must remain skeptical of Donald Trump and everyone else. We don't have to jump just because he says the right things. And we have every reason to fear that this could just be a, another Ross Perot shuck and jive. Quote me on that. I don't know whether you heard that yet today on the uh, cartel, the radio cartel, but you heard it here. It could be a shuck and jive. I'd vote for him if it's real. Now, I would be remiss not to close with the following. Here is the liar, Rachel Dolezal, in clip 19. You're not going to believe what she said. Listen to this one. I, as a, from a very young age, felt a, I don't know, a spiritual, visceral, just very instinctual connection with um, Black is Beautiful. And, and I didn't know I didn't, how to articulate that as a young child. I mean, in kindergarten or whatever. Like, but certainly that was that was shut down. I mean, I was socially conditioned to not own that and to be be limited to 
to whatever biological identity was was thrust upon me and and narrated to me. I demand FBI charges against her for lying about her race in her applications. I demand an investigation. And I want all you white boys out there to apply for black scholarships and check black on your applications and tell me what might happen. Go ahead. Go ahead and make my day. Go ahead. Make my day. Check black when you're white and see what might happen. See if you get on the Today Show. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. We owe China... $1.3 $1.3 trillion. We owe Japan more than that. So they come in, they take our jobs, they take our money, and then they loan us back the money, and we pay them an interest. And then the dollar goes up, so their deal's even better. How stupid are our leaders? How stupid are these politicians to allow this to happen? Today on the one and only Savage Nation, would you vote for Trump? I would. With a caveat, that is to make certain he's not running as a spoiler the way Ross Perot did. I've talked about that before. And uh, the next topic is the race scandal and what it means for the rest of the country. And then the issue of the fallible Pope and the Pope's mischief. The world is so crazy and so upside down because of the imposter in the White House that we've gone from the email to shemales in one administration. That's right. I don't think that we should call our emails emails anymore. I think we should call them shemales. Because I think it's an affront to all the shemales out there to refer to emails as emails. I think we should say I'm sending you a shemale. And then we can change it from dot com to something else. I think that's an affront as well. I think that offends people. And I think that anyone who feels they can fly a commercial jet should be allowed to walk into a cockpit and say that uh, being a pilot is more complex than proving you can be a pilot, and that I should be allowed to take the controls of a passenger jet and fly it, the way this uh, NAACP leader has done, or the way Al Sharpton has used race for personal advantage, in my opinion, or the way Jesse Jackson has ridden the racehorse his entire life, or the way Obama has ridden and continues to ride the racehorse in his war against America and his war against the police. Yeah, we're living in dangerous times. So over the weekend, your president was nowhere to be found. He was partying, playing golf. And today was the big day. He's supposed to bring back the trade agreement today and try to lobby for it. No one can find him. He's hung over from a party, a private party of 500 people. Prince party. won't disclose who was at the party. So he was confronted by a Wall Street Journal reporter through his, his spokesmouth, that, the Goebbels of the administration. The Wall Street Journal reporter grilled the Goebbels of the administration, Josh Ernest, the American version of of Joseph Goebbels, on Obama's private party. You must listen to clip 28. Can you just explain what criteria the White House faces satisfying something as a private event on that you don't disclose on the president's public schedule? I think that what I can just describe to you is that the President First Lady uh, hosted a private social event at the White House on Saturday night. Uh, and it was not something that, um, uh, that it, was a, it was a private event and something that they paid for. Oh, really? Now listen to 29. You guys disclose private events, presumably, that don't have coverage. For instance, when the President hosts a screening in the White House movie theater. This was 500 people, lobbyists, corporate executives, an international celebrity, and it wasn't even on the president's schedule. So how do you justify that? And how is that in line with the president's commitment to transparency? I think the fact that we're talking about a private event and 
Uh, the fact that details of this are known is an indication that the president is committed to uh, being transparent. At the same time, Lousy the president and first lady are going to reserve the right to host uh, private parties at the White this House. This Josh Ernst, if ever there's an election where we have an honest American, we have to have a trial for crimes against humanity. And you know that after, and I'm not comparing it to that era, one of the worst eras in human history, afterwards there were trials for people who had foisted this upon the nation of Germany and the world. Josh Ernst is the equivalent of Goebbels. Can you imagine this man says this shows that they're transparent because they admitted they had a party while he is hiding who was at the party? Can you imagine we fall into this level? Yeah, well, I can. When you have a president who's faked it from the day he started, yeah, I can believe anything. And that brings us back to the woman, the woman who's having her 15 minutes of fame. No doubt some psychotic publisher will offer her uh, a big deal of money to write the book. I guess she'll say, what, black and trapped in a white body? Or That would be a good title. Huh? Well, I know, I'm uh, trapped in a white body. Something like that. And that would be a big seller for the fools out there. The complete story of uh, this idiot. So that's another big story. She changed her identity when it suited her. She sued Howard University, an all-black university, to claim that she was discriminated against because she was white. The case was thrown out. She's filed false claims in Spokane against the police. Did you know that? Of racial uh, incidents. Did you know they were all thrown out because she's a, a complete fraud? Do you know this? Matt Lauer didn't ask her any of that. And now she's doubling down and lying about this race thing because she's riding it to a higher level than she did before. I mean, the NAACP is just chicken feet compared to where she's going next. Now, we have evidence that she protested in Baltimore when the city caught fire. She was at the riots in Baltimore. Did you know that? We have a clip of Rachel Dolezal. I don't think anyone else in radio had this today. Here is the faker, the race faker in clip 21. Listen to this. I just flew in this morning from Spokane, Washington. I'm representing the Alaska, Oregon, Washington NAACP. I'm the president of the Spokane NAACP in Washington State. And this is a situation that's affecting us over in that state as well. So I wanted to join with you in support today. Um, we just marched in Pasco, Washington, where a youth had, um, you know, a rock a little bigger than this and was shot and killed Antonio in the street, Zambrano Antonio Zambrano Montes. Uh, yes. And we are supporting his, his mother. The cops are, have been on paid vacation for three months. And a 37-year-old black man who has seven children just died in police custody in Spokane, Washington. This is something that is affecting us nationwide, and if there is no justice, there will be no peace. Absolutely. Absolutely. No justice. No, no peace. peace. No, no racist. racist. Police. No liars, no peace. No liars, no peace. No liars, no peace. I'd like to see 10 million people stand up and shout these frauds down. I'm sick of it. There she was, communist agitator put on bronzette makeup and made believe she was black. How can a black person who disagrees with me on so many issues not call this show and say, Savage, I agree with you. The woman's a disgrace. She has no right getting away with this. But not one black person, not one leftist black has come up here and said one word about that. Nope, not one. So I'll continue to do it. So because she feels she's black, she's black. So if you feel like you're a commercial airline pilot, you are now a commercial airline pilot. If you feel like you're a baseball player, can you walk out on a field, on Wrigley Field, and uh, participate in a baseball game? Why don't you try running out onto a field of sport and say you feel like you're a, a, a football player, see what happens. Uh, why don't you go up into a boxing ring and say you feel like you're a boxer? And when you have your head busted open by a real fighter who hits you once, what would you say? You couldn't do that to me because I felt like I was a boxer. Therefore, you had no right to beat me up. You should have respected my complex feelings of being a, a boxer, and you shouldn't have hit me so hard. You should have complied with my inner boxer. This is the world under Barack Obama. Now we have the faker in the White House who has so screwed up the world order that Putin is now moving nuclear missiles on the steps of Europe again. Obama is starting World War III because of the neocons who were advising him. The golfer, the party man, doesn't understand that there are concerts. Do you know he's surrounded by girls like Rachel Donazel? Do you understand that when I've called them a sorority, i got to calm down because I could get sick from the agitation I feel. When I have called the people around Obama a sorority, 
Do you understand that they all think like Rachel Donazel? They act like Rachel Donazel. They think that because they feel like a policy advisor, they are a policy advisor. They feel that they can advise them on Putin, so they advise him in a way that starts World War III. Putin will add 40 missiles to his nuclear arsenal on the uh, doorstep of Europe because of the girls, the sorority girls, who think that they understand foreign policy. They feel that they understand foreign policy. That's how they bullied their way through college. They bullied their way through college the same way this Rachel creature bullied her way into the NAACP. The same way Obama bullied his way into the presidency. The same way that the faker, Eric Holder, bullied his way into the attorney general's office by threatening everybody with lawsuits. The same way the Pope is bullying his way into the climate issue, demanding a new global authority, saying rich nations are destroying the world. This man is infesting the world with his lie because he's part of the new world order. I received an email this morning, not a she-mail, from a Dr. Ileana Johnson who just came back from Romania in Europe. And here's what she said. I'm sad to say what Dr. Savage has warned us about years ago has come to pass even in Romania, the country that had suffered so much on the four decades of communist dictatorship. They managed to replace one evil master, the commies, with another, the globalists, corporatists. No sooner had they freed themselves from communism in 1989 that the European Union has stepped in with the Fabian socialism with lots of indoctrination strings attached to their financial help to the newly minted and impoverished EU state in dire need, Romania. Dr. Savage warned us about liberalism as a mental disorder. European liberals on steroids called progressives have influenced Romanian economics and politics so much that they are now well underway to global governance. Romania now has the Green Party, environmentalism gone amok, school indoctrination into the cult of Gaia, destruction of national identity, revisionist history, border irre irrelevance, Muslim immigration, ignoring anything that identifies and ties Romanians to their culture and language, replacement of perfectly good Romanian words with English neologisms, brainwashing of the population by the church into blind submission to the statists, corruption at all levels, bribery for votes, socialized medical care on a dwindling budget, and a disappearance of the middle class, which had emerged successfully after the supposed fall of the communists in 1989. Dr. Savage lectured his listeners about the out-of-control immigration and all the hallmarks of the New World Order that is taking over every facet of our lives in the U.S. and across the globe. Unemployment is high. Inflation is escalating. Jobs are not created. Politicians make empty and dishonest promises to the voters. Contracts and companies are moving overseas. Young people seek jobs elsewhere in the EU. No big-time corrupt politician are going to jail, and there is a hopelessness for the future of their children. She concludes her letter to me as such. I was saddened to see in Romania the same elements of global control, despair, and welfare dependency we see in the United States today. Sincerely, Dr. Ileana Johnson to Michael Savage. So the Pope now feels he knows about global warming. He is the Rachel Donazel of the climate debate. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Mike. So we have the real candidate, Donald Trump, and the fake pope, who is the Rachel Donazel of the Catholic Church. He feels he knows something about climate, so therefore he puts out an encyclical which could affect hundreds of millions of people around the globe, all in the name of Fabian socialism, all in the name of stealing from the middle class to give to the rich. Make no mistake about it, he is a front man for the powers that gave us Obama. I could never prove it, but I can feel it. And because I feel it, it must be true. Because I feel that the Pope was put here by the New World Order, it must be true. I feel I know it's true, and I identify in this manner, so therefore it's far too complex for me to explain why it's not true. It must be true. The Pope must be 100% wrong in doing so. Well, anyway, you get the picture. Meanwhile, this Rachel Dal Dalazel and the Pope coming along at the same time are, are almost too good to be true. How can you Catholics not object to this? How can you Americans, you know, you know what's really ironic here? and cynical and as hell. You got the leftists who have spit on the Catholic Church from the beginning of the century, 
spit on the Catholic Church, mocked it, made a mockery of it. And here they're embracing the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church has embraced the most radical opinions of the far left. The Catholic Church is the far left today under this Pope. That's what the Catholic, it's been hijacked. The Catholic Church has been hijacked by the radical left. And this Pope is a front man for the radical left, not only on the climate issue, but on every other social issue. I don't know. I don't know how the Catholic people, educated people, can't see this. Ronnie on WABC, how, how do you feel about the Pope getting away with this? Oh, I can't stand it. Let me tell you. I just want the people out there to understand that the majority of Catholics out there, we do not like this Pope. We're not like uh, the People's Temple or the Branch Davidian. We, we don't believe that, you know, he's high <laughs> almighty. And, you know, we're so, so the Pope's not giving out something special in Kool-Aid then? No, not at all. <laughs> And also, you know, and also, uh, you know, like I said, he's a well, maybe maybe, maybe a, a sharp businessman can make Pope's, uh, let's say, climate change Kool Aid and sell it to two billion Catholics. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's, I have another right. Instead of giving out the wafer at services, couldn't they give out little packets of a climate change Kool Aid and charge ten cents a shot? He he's not fooling us. Him and and the other uh, the other guys that support him, like uh, Timothy Dolan, who's another phony, and and uh, was it Bill Donahue with the Catholic League? Who uh, yeah, I want to hear what Bill Donahue has to say after this show, because Donahue knows that I've defended the popes in the past. Remember, there was a story about Hitler's pope for a year. I railed against that big lie, and I proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the pope during World War II was the opposite of Hitler's pope, and that that pope had done everything he could to save Jews and others. Okay, and then the next thing I know is I wake up and Bill Donovan attacked me. And I really resented that. And I can guarantee you he's going to go along with the party line on this. Well, here's, here's the thing with him. He compromised with NBC to have the, uh, the, the gay float up there and, and all that stuff so he could do his, um, him and, and Dolan, so, that, so he could do, uh, what do you call it? The, um, well, I understand. Look, you know, Stendhal, a great French writer, wrote a book called The Red and the Black. And he was talking about France in his time, where a young man who was ambitious had only two choices before himself. He could put on the red of the army uniform or the black of the uh, priesthood in order to move ahead in society. But they were both politicians, in essence. This pope is a political animal. And we in America have a little thing called the separation of church and state. We are not bamboozled by a clean white outfit and a huge cross. We're not buying this big lie. And I think it's up to the Catholic people to turn their backs on this pope before it is too late, before they wake up and find out that they're in chains. This man is a Marxist through and through. Came from a Marxist country, picked by the New World Order the way Obama was. How can you not see that? My friend, I'm sending you a great Father's Day president, present. Countdown to Mecca by yours truly, Michael Savage. You're going to love that novel. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yes! Mark my words. Yes! Well, all good, all good, all good, unless we have to be cautious. We have to remain cynical. We're not naive. If it's going to be a, uh, uh, you know, a Ross Perot job, forget about it. So we have to be cautious. We have to pray Mr. Trump sincerely wants to run it on as a Republican and pick a candidate for VP uh, such as Ben Carson who will, will indicate he truly is running against Hillary. If, on the other hand, he runs as a third-party candidate, he's going to split the ticket and uh, elect Hillary Clinton, and it's all over. Now, I'm glad that he said he would build a great wall. It comes right out of my, books, trick, my book, Trickle Up Poverty, in my manifesto, number two was close the borders, use illegal aliens to build a wall between the U.S. and Mexico, pay the illegals for their labor in the form of a one-time worker fee upon finishing repatriate them. Uh, put the troops, out of, pull the troops out of Germany, South Korea, where they're doing nothing, and put them on our southern border. Number four was defund and repeal Obamacare. I think his advisors have read my book very carefully. And never, ever forget that although I am marginalized, and ostracized by the vermin in the media. I have an, a, a monster audience. I'm on the biggest stations in the country in drive time on the East Coast. I am on the Gold Coast of talk radio. Make no mistake about it, I am not a marginal player. 
so they all hear me. Anyone with an over 110 IQ listens to this show from time to time. They all know what I have to think, and most of them who identify as liberals are doing so for personal gain, but they actually agree with me. They would never admit it. So there are many other things that Trump said that come right out of my book. He said that he will beef up the military by finding, quote, the guy, the General Patton or General MacArthur to lead it. He also vows to get tough with Iran. He also took a jab at Jeb Bush in, in, in favor of Common Core, because Bush, as you know, is a statist who supports Common Core. Trump opposes it. Trump said in America needs him to beat China and keep the crime and drugs from over the border outside of the U.S. And he also named Islamic terrorism for what it is, and he said Islamic terrorism eating up large portions of the Middle East. So now ISIS has the oil and what they don't have, Iran has. Let's play the ISIS piece, guys. Donald Trump on ISIS as opposed to the phony Republicans. Listen. So now ISIS has the oil. And what they don't have, Iran has. Years ago, I said, and I love the military, and I want to have the strongest military that we've ever had, and we needed more now than ever. But I said, don't hit Iraq, because you're going to totally destabilize the Middle East. Iran is going to take over the Middle East. Iran and somebody else will get the oil. And it turned out that Iran is now taking over Iraq. Think of it. Iran is taking over Iraq. That came out of my 2006 book, Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. Now again, written and actually published in 2005, again I want to thank his advisors for reading my book and seeing that I said exactly the same thing. In fact, I wrote exactly those words, or almost those exact words. I'm not accusing Mr. Trump of lifting them. I'm saying thank God that my ideas are being uh, promoted on the world stage, because I feared that. In fact, I said that in the, <laughs> in the chapter where I said more patent and less patent leather. Remember that one? Remember that one? More patent and less patent leather? Chapter one of Liberalism is a Mental Disorder, written so many years ago. 10 years ago. God, I've been at this a long time. So you would think that of the, all the best sellers, someone's read these books. You'd think they've had wide circulation. And so when I wrote more patent, less patent leather, I wrote this. Donald Trump just said it. But in 05, I published it in my book. I'll quote myself. I believe the Iraq war will be recorded as one of the greatest of military miscalculations. And before you dismiss me as a flag-burning pacifist, let me be clear. Team Bush won Operation Iraqi Freedom in a most spectacular fashion. Using sophisticated high-tech weapons, our courageous warriors proved once again that they are the brightest and the best soldiers on the planet, period. Their enormous superiority on the battlefield was unmatched, a lesson not missed by the world community. And then I went on, and I said, so why do I insist the historians and the cadets at West Point we look back on the war in Iraq as a gigantic miscalculation. Bush won the initial conflict in a brilliant display of strength. However, he struggled to maintain the peace in Iraq because he didn't have an overall strategic plan to eliminate the pockets of resistance and establish immediate control of the streets. Fighting a politically acceptable pacification does not work. And then I went on and I wrote other things in this book about Iraq and Iran. And I said that this could turn out to be one of the greatest military blunders in history. Because if it's wrong, Iran will be the big winner. And so there I say to you again, I've seen things years ago that people are seeing and saying now. And I see, see things now that people will be saying in 10 or 20 years. Yes, indeed. Supersizing Iran is what I called it. I said it could be that Bush's war will have inadvertently created a super Iran. How? Operation Iraqi Freedom is, in effect, creating a Shiite nation, Iraq, next door to another Shiite nation, Iran, who happens to be a founding member of the Axis of Evil. Shiite Shmiite, you say. What's this got to do with you? Plenty, I wrote. There is the possibility that Shiite Iraq will ally, ally itself with Iran, a nation ruled by Shiite Ayatollahs, and unify against us, which means that the hornet's nest of radical Islam may actually increase in size, rather than, as Bush had hoped, shrink. In sheeple terms, that means we might have just supersized our terrorists' base. 2005, 2005, I ended that chapter by saying, we may have liberated the Shiites, but Americans are still infidels to them. You hear that one? We're still infidels to all of them. Make no mistake about it. 
That was my great book, Liberalism as a Mental Disorder, published so many years ago in 2005. Well, here we are today in 2015. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since I wrote those, those uh, prophetic words. Well, what words do I have for you today? We now have men posing as women saying that because they feel like a woman, they're a woman. We now have white people posing as blacks and not only getting away with saying because they feel like they're black, they are black, but then being celebrated in the media as such. And of course, in the universities, this pollution has become uh, the norm. This, this mental pollution, this disease of liberalism, this twisting of reality has made nothing real. Everything is what you want to make it. If it feels good, do it. Why not do it in the road has led to this? That's right. Let's take a caller or two on the Savage Nation. Everyone who gets on the show this hour gets a free copy of my great novel, Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. And I suggest you rush to the bookstores today, tomorrow, or the next day and buy one for your dad. There's no greater gift for a man than this testosterone-pounding book, Countdown, <laughs> Countdown to Mecca. It's actually a book that reads like a boxing match. It's so exciting. People tell me I can't believe it. WGAW, Thomas, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to say that this Rachel Danzel is a living example of the evolution of the liberal lie. It starts with transgender. You're born a man, but you identify as a woman. Now she's born white and identifies as black. And the question is, where does it end? I'm certainly not surprised by this idea. I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. Why hasn't anybody tried this before? Or is it just now it's perfect timing with all this uh, racial unrest in our country? Well, I'm sorry, but this is a very sensitive issue. When you have a president who is biracial and only identifies as a black president, what does that tell you? I don't know. I, I can never make Well, I do know. I do know. I know exactly what I know. I do know. I know exactly what he's done. He's used race to get ahead. Obama has used his racial identity to get ahead. And I'm quoting him when I say that. Don't attack me for his own words. In his autobiography, he wrote that he never identified as a black radical when he was young. Never. He was raised as a lily-white spoiled boy in Honolulu by two white grandparents who doted on him. You know that, don't you? I do know this. Okay. And he said that when he left Occidental College, he was still not identifying, identifying with the black radical uh, uh, movement. It was when he went to Columbia U, he said that he identified as a black radical with all of the other radicals, the white ones in particular, that he started to get the attention that he always deserved and always wanted, rather. And that is when he became radicalized. And that's when he identified with the black liberation movement. Read his own autobiography, if you don't believe me. It's the same thing that this racial woman's doing. But the question is, where does it end? Where does it end? Well, well where, does it, where does it end? It ends when we get a guy like Trump in the presidency who doesn't mince words and all the liars drop off like the fleas that they are. All, all the liars drop off the body politic like the fleas that they are and we stop listening to these frauds. It'll take 10, 15 years to fix what, they've, what this man has done to this country. I am sending you Countdown to Mecca to read for Father's Day. I want to know why Dalazal has not been prosecuted by the FBI or a state agency for impersonation. I'd like to know why. And I'd also like to know what you think about a white boy listening to this show applying for a scholarship that is limited only to people of African-American heritage and checking African-American on the application. And then when the boy wins, I'd like to see what happens when they find out he's white, when he steps on, up on the stage to get the scholarship for blacks. Do you think he'll be treated to a visit to the Today Show? Hmm? 855 ftl in uh, Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Jane, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yes, uh, I wanted to say that you are right on, and you speak such prophetic words. And the connection between uh, the Pope, who is a fraud, I agree with you 100%, uh, and Obama are, that they are uh, pursuing a one-world government, that the reason why they are flooding this nation, that we're having an invasion of illegals, is because these people don't know the Bible, and they're basically Christians following the Pope. 
and they're just going to take over like that. That's their plan. Well, everything that this pope is doing is in alignment with the radical left around the world. It's in accord with Obama's New World Order vision. It's in accord with George Soros' vision for the dystopia that is awaiting us. This man has to be challenged because... I have never seen a pope more political than this in my life, and we in America have a clear boundary between politics and religion, don't we? Does the pope not understand how offensive he is being here in the United States of America? We're not a bunch of ignoramuses from the third world who buy it lock, stock, and barrel because he has a white robe and a big airplane. Amen. Michael, um, Smith, you I'm are sending right. you, I'm sending a copy of Countdown to Mecca to you for Father's Day. I hope there's a man in your family. If not, you can read it, madam, as a Father's Day gift to a woman. Many of you are calling about Mr. Trump and you're hoping that he's running, uh, uh, sincerely running to win, not to upset the Republican ticket. And we're all cynical enough to question anybody right now after what Obama's done to us. After what Obama has done to us and because of phonies on every level of government and politics, we have every right to ask ourselves, is Mr. Trump running to win or is he running as a spoiler along the lines of Ross Perot? We can do that without insulting him. He likes to be blunt. We like to be blunt. And I hope Mr. Trump comes on the show. And if he does, I will ask him that. I will not try to trip, trip him up. I'm, I'm stating it right now. I'm sure his assistant wrote it down. And I'm asking him again. How can you demonstrate to the cynics out there, the skeptics rather, who fear that you may be running as a spoiler to split the Republican ticket, Mr. Trump? How can you reassure them? Because if he can do that, he's going to win. I'll tell you right now. The millions of voters who will not vote otherwise, they're not going to vote for a Jeb Bush. They're not going to vote for the weasel. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I forget his name, the weasel. He's gone. He's so irrelevant. Cruz the weasel. He's not voting. They're not voting for the ice cream man who is basically a, a, a pet on a chain of Larry Ellison. They're not voting for them. They're going to stay home. They're not going to vote at all. They come out and vote for, a, for, for Trump if, if, capital I, they know he's really running to defeat Hillary Clinton. Now, the fact of the matter is, and this has been disclosed, is that the Trumps, the tr Mr. Trump has given money to the Clinton Library. That's not unusual unto itself. People do that at a high level of society. But that does not mean that he is working with Hillary Clinton. I want to be very clear about that. We have to take him on his word. However, I think he has to answer the following question. Who would you choose as a running mate? Would you, cho would you consider ben, uh, Mr. Co Dr. Carson? Who would you choose? And I'd really like to see the answer to that question. That's the one I would ask. If he chooses Ben Carson, we'll know it's for real. If he says he will not run as a, a third-party candidate, then I know it's for real. If, on the other hand, I hear he's going to set up his own party, I'm sorry. Then it's Hillary Clinton, and that's the end of the road. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, we've gone from the email to the she-mail in one administration, and uh, now we have the Donald, Mr. Donald Trump saying he wants to be president. What I'm about to play for you has not yet aired. He gave an interview today with George Staphylococcus, who well, I thought had been embarrassed. I thought he was off the air, but apparently Staphylococcus is still operating. And I don't know whether uh, Donald's answer to whether he would choose Oprah Winfrey as a running mate was facetious or real. I pray to God he was just trying to fend off Staphylococcus from his uh, clothing. But you got to listen to this because if he's serious, oh boy, are we really being duped. Listen. Back in 1999, when you were thinking of running as the Reform Party candidate, you told Larry King that you'd consider Oprah for vice president. I like Oprah, what can I tell you? She's still on your short list? Oh, she's great, she's talented, she's a friend of mine, she's a good person. I've been on her show, in fact, I was on her show her last week. She said, could I be on her show with the whole family? I like Oprah, I mean, is that supposed to be a bad thing? I don't no, think but so. Is, who, so when no, you think I like about Oprah. who the kind of people you're gonna run I think with. Oprah would be great, I'd love to have Oprah. I think would win easily, actually. <laughs> so we don't know if that's a facetious answer because if that's what he's thinking, it's over. That's all, it's over, then it's all a sham, simple. It's over. Then the whole thing was just a, a, a garbage, a garbage deal. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not worth the uh, good, the good uh, lettuce on the on the buffet line to put up with this. When we've been put up with this liar in the White House and the da the damage he's done to us, 
I want Mr. Trump to be clear. We'll vote for you. And the millions of people who are fed up in this country will vote for you. But we don't want you to be a spoiler for Hillary Clinton. And you cannot pick Oprah Winfrey as your running mate. Because you're not going to get 10 votes with her as a running mate. Okay? We don't need another liberal in the White House. You want to win? Pick Ben Carson as a VP. Pick somebody conservative. Pick somebody we know we can count on and trust. Not another TV construct. That's it for the Savage Nation.